What's going on guys? I'm Michael, Michael Anthony Photography, and thank you for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine. Guys, this month was all about shooting at night on a wedding day or, uh, or night photography. Oftentimes, uh, at the very end of the wedding, we always schedule it in our timeline to take our couple out and, um, and do a night session with them at the very end of the night. This allows us to uh, not only create a lasting impression, but also create unique imagery that is going to allow us to close out the album. You guys know that on a wedding day, the uh, the timeline is always crammed. You are fighting for every minute you can with your bride and groom to take good pictures. And uh, and if you are looking to create images that are gonna truly and uniquely stand out from the, from the rest of the images that you uh, provide them that day, I always recommend taking them out at night, using some speed lights or um, some pro photo uh, strobes to create some really unique and beautiful portraits for your couple. Now, this will not work, guys, if you do not talk with your couple about it beforehand, all right? And the reason for that is because if you just bombard them at the last minute with um, with a, a, another portrait session at the very end of the night, they're not gonna be ready for it, right? So oftentimes, they'll get out on the dance floor, they'll be dancing hard, they're gonna be sweating. You're not gonna get really good pictures if if they're not in the mindset to go out and take good photos. So really, really important to schedule this time in advance. And I recommend not doing it at the very end of the night, but I recommend trying to get that time at dusk or at the blue hour. If you could shoot at the blue hour, you guys are gonna get really, really beautiful images. This is when you can use techniques like color shifting that I talked about last year in the lighting edition um, to get these really beautiful skies and just really gorgeous portraits. So I'll always recommend taking them out at nighttime and putting this in the timeline beforehand. Now, next, make sure that you guys know uh, your equipment and make sure you guys are equipped to, uh, to shoot uh, for a night session. Now, a couple things that you're definitely gonna need, or at least I recommend for sure, a combination of video lights and flashes because you don't know what you're going to need for any given situation. For video lights, I absolutely love the Ice Light. Uh, I've used it quite a bit in the past. The new uh, Yang Nuo is a really, really nice product as well too. Um, and then the Roto Light Neo is uh, is my newest video light, and I absolutely love that product because you can dial in the color temperature um, on the very back of the uh, the product itself. Um, that'll allow you to get the perfect color temperature that'll match the ambient light or not match the ambient light if you're looking for creative effects as well. Um, in terms of flashes uh, for nighttime, my go-to is usually going to be speed lights just because you don't need the power of a pro photo system or a, um, or a, a higher powered strobe. So I'll often use the, uh, the Canon 600EXRT system. Uh, if you're a Nikon shooter, I hear the, the, the Photix system is really, really good. I've never tried it myself, but uh, a lot of photographers that I know use it and they're, uh, they're using it really well. Uh, nonetheless, uh, a couple modifiers you guys are going to need. If you're shooting at nighttime, you're definitely going to need something to soften that light up. You don't want hard light at nighttime uh, too often unless you're shooting a, a portrait from a little bit further away. So I recommend umbrellas. They're quick, easy to set up. Uh, the Westcott Rapid Box Duo is one of my favorites because you can use that during the daytime and you can get some um, really interesting uh, uh, images if you're able to overpower the sun using the, the dual flash bracket. Uh, and then also um, also use uh, the Magmod system as well too. So Magmod makes a, uh, a couple of different products. They have a, uh, I believe they call it the Mag Spear, which is a, um, it's a big white uh, silicone uh, diffuser that goes over the head of the flash. That'll help soften the light up. And then obviously gels, because gels are gonna really help you take that, um, that image to the next level in terms of creativity. You'll be able to uh, shift light or shift the color of ambient light using gels. You'll be able to create cr uh, interesting and creative effects You'll be able to match the ambient light if you need to. And there's a whole lot of other things that you can do uh, with gel. So definitely have those things in your camera bag and ready to go. Lastly, um, make sure you guys are shooting some images at this time of day for your album. If you're not selling albums right now, start selling albums right now. That's how you guys are going to create uh, a, a unique product and you're going to be able to just increase your sales overall to uh, to make a sustainable living doing photography. So um, just because you offer albums doesn't always mean that you're gonna shoot for them automatically, okay? You have to make sure that you're shooting a variety of images, horizontal and vertical, uh, and at nighttime during this portrait session is absolutely no different. If you are out at nighttime and you cannot find anything interesting, just find some ambient light to use as a background and then backlight your subjects and then you can use that, that image as a long horizontal spread in a horizontal album, um, or if you're doing a vertical album, uh, you can use that as a full spread as well too. Uh, try to get creative with it. Look for reflections, that'll, that'll work often at nighttime. Look for uh, water on the ground to create those reflections. That'll look really beautiful. And then also try to bring in a little bit of the ambient light that will be there, especially if you're shooting at dusk, because then you'll have, uh, you'll have some background. It won't, everything won't get completely sucked into black. Now, if you guys are shooting um, in an environment, let's say you're at a country club and there's absolutely no light whatsoever to use. Uh, Amazon sells some string lights, which make interesting patterns to shoot through, uh, or you can just use a back, um, backlighting 
on your subjects and just create a, uh, a lot of negative space in the final image. Um, you can also use uh, flash gels to create a little bit of color contrast, but just make sure you're using complementary colors. Oranges and blues go well together. Uh, yellow and, and purple uh, looks really nice together. Grab a color wheel and, and mess around with the color combinations and practice so that you can get some really, really good results. All right, guys, thank you a lot for checking out my article on this one, Shutter Magazine. I can't wait to talk to you next month and, uh, and we'll catch you next month in Shutter Magazine. Hello guys, I'm Michael, Michael Anthony Photography. <laughs>